So welcome everyone. Uh, I think everyone is in about now, so we can start our webinar. Um, today is the topic um, best practice for dashboard design, and uh, the focus will be on uh, visual because um, my perception uh, dashboard is really visual. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so welcome, uh, thank you for coming. And uh, my name is Marisa, and today I'm here with Dan. And uh, he's my colleague from the Information Lab Netherlands. And the next half hour, we will talk about visual best practices. And um, if something is not clear, drop a message so we can explain it better. Uh, there should be also a QA and um, just say something and then Dan uh, will ask the question and uh, yeah, then we can continue. And if you have a request about a topic you would like to be, uh, that you would like to explain it a bit better, uh, also feel free to leave a comment um, and to ask about a topic so we can dive into the topic and then we can do a next session about it. So again, thank you for coming. So visual best practices. Um, why actually visual best practices? Um, for me, it's actually quite simple. You could have the best data, the best ideas, and you worked really hard and you did everything right. The, the data you collected was awesome. A lot of data, the questions you asked, they were right. Um, everything you did right, and then in, and then you're building your dashboard because you want to uh, showcase your data. Um, if you um, don't do if you don't do that in a way that communicates to people, um, it could be that you don't have all your data represented. So you could have done all the all the hard work, but if somebody doesn't understand uh, what's in there or has a different perception, um, you will not get your message through. And that is why there are visual uh, best practices. Um, and so it's really good to look at what works and what doesn't work. And in the example I said, it would be really a waste, a waste of your hard work. And I assume that is not what you intend to do. And it's also a question, why does something work and why doesn't it? Uh, why is that so? Why is that so? Um, you could look at different things. You could start with the, the types of graphs you're using, uh, maybe the colors you use, um, the, the combination of it all. There are a lot of things. Um, yeah, you can, um, where you can make a decision in. And that's also what I like about dashboard design. You can really use your creative creativity but the goal, the goal would be, at least for me, to uh, communicate what I did or what I want to communicate the most effectively way as possible. And that's why I really like uh, uh, visual, uh, yes, visual information. So why do we actually visualize? There are different reasons to visualize, but the main, re main reason is to see and understand your data. And most data sets are too complex to understand at once. And we use the visualization to get a better understanding of our data. And as a human, uh, we're limited in what information we can process and compare in our heads. 
And it has been said that the average human being can remember seven, seven digits in uh, his or her working memory. So if I would say a phone number at once, it would be difficult to remember it. So it's only seven, so that's not a lot. And there are always, always people who are accept, uh, exception of the rule, but this is by average. And what the good news is, is that we humans are good in quickly processing visual information. Um, and visual information is everywhere. Uh, for example, um, if you uh, take the metro in Amsterdam, I don't know if you ever have taken the metro in Amsterdam, but who has noticed that every uh, metro line has its own color? So you don't, um, you're not, uh, you're not able to. Um, so you're not, you don't have to uh, remember the, the digits, or maybe you only have to remember the colors. So this is an example, uh, and what's also really visual is that there is an orange line, and now you see if you want to take the metro, 54, look for the color yellow. And you don't need to remember anything else. That's it. Um, that's the one that takes you to your destination. And if you see another color, don't take that metro. And of course, there are people who are colorblind. That's another discussion. I think 8% of men and less than 1% of women is colorblind. Um, but keep that in mind. But this is, this is an example, and it's only two digits you have to remember, and now you have to color yellow. And, to, and almost everyone who has a vision is capable to uh, different, differentiate between light and dark, uh, big and small, um, and, it's, and if a shape is alone or in a group. And I saw that somebody raised their hand. Um, I think it's best if you can uh, type in the question, then uh, Dan can um, tell the question and then he can, he, can, uh, he can tell the question and answer, and I can help you answer the question. So the more you work with data visualization, the better you become at reading a chart. And you really don't need to be a data science to work with charts. And in my opinion, a good visual best practice is something you can understand easily. Without a lot of, a lot of explanation, the image should speak for itself. With some help of useful titles uh, that actually have information in them and something else than just bar chart. But always keep your audience in mind. You as the sender should adapt to the receiver. As an example, um, I have been at the Center of Human Humanitarian Data. And in almost all countries in the world, people can read some form of graphs. But if they don't have access to a computer, but only to a phone, uh, limit limit the visual, uh, the visuals. So don't make it super complex. Okay, I want to show you a quick example and uh, you can type your answer in the chat. And then um, I, I'm looking for the one, uh, yeah, if you know the answer, tell me. And then the question is, how many times do you see the number five? So who is the first? Uh, just let me know. And if after, after 20 seconds nobody knows it, then uh, I will just continue. 
So count the number fives. <laughs> You know, it's interesting, Maurice, you said um, correctly that most people can remember up to about seven digits. Uh, apparently, even with the rise of smartphones, it's dropping down to five. Oh, wow. That's not, that's not a lot, now. She's actually funny because you're asking people to count to five, so... <laughs> it's a coincidence, or maybe it's not. Okay, I think everybody has about enough time. Um, and this is not something you would like to do. Chris ah. thinks there's one. There's one five. Okay, I have one answer. Uh, I think the rest of us is still counting two answers. Okay. I will hear you. And now you can count again. And I think you will need less time. Um, so. Yeah. Six. Francois had it in very, very limited time. Okay, well, then the, he's also an exception of the rule, which is cool. Um, so this is an example that it's like, it, it's, it's a bit hard. We have um, six times the five. And if I would make it a, a red color, if I would uh, change it to a bigger size, it becomes easier to see easier to understand. So, but nice. And just imagine these, these are only like one, two, three, four rows. Uh, imagine that, um, that this would be the data. Now it's even rolled up to country and now I'm going to ask you, what is the second biggest number? It's difficult. It, it's, um, and this is even uh, rolled up. If I would go to the data source like this, and if I would ask you, um, what is the biggest, uh, what is the biggest CO2 emission? I really have to scroll. I have to look, I have to find it, and it's per year. So, this is complex and this is only a sample of thousands of rows. Imagine if you would have millions of rows. A uh, human mind is not capable of that. What you could do is visualize your data and then even sort it from big uh, to small. Um, so this is one way that I can see in my data from, from all the countries uh, and all the CO2, CO2 emissions together, I see, I see China is the biggest. And I didn't do anything with the data, this is just put it all together and now I see it because it's visual. The bar, uh, the longest bar has the most emission. And for me, this is really clear. I can see it at once. And I think most people can. Okay, um, so, and why is that so? What, um, what, uh, why is it that you could see those things so easily? Well, this is because um, it's part of the pre-attentive attributes. That is something to keep in mind. Um, in this case, I used length uh, to differentiate. And um, I could have used color. I could have used uh, a lot of things. Uh, but for this time, I used length. Could also be width, could be size, and closure. Those are all uh, attributes to make something clear. For example, in the orientation, this one is a little bit tilted. It immediately catches my eyes. Same goes for the width and the size. Uh, you could use different shapes, different curves, uh, marks, uh, put one mark in a box, uh, or you could cha change your color or the position. Um, if I look at position and spatial grouping, nothing says that 
those four and those four in the right corner are together, but because they are standing so close, I immediately assume those belong together. Nobody said so, but this is what I assume. And because this little dot is left out, I can also see like this one is not part of the group. And those are all uh, pre-attentive attributes and um, they will help you to communicate your dashboard or your or the, the story or the data you would like to tell. And there's also another reason um, why you would like to visualize and not just um, leave the data as it is. Um, I know that Dan, if you would like to tell something about it, you wrote a really nice blog about um, why you should visualize. Uh, yes. So what I've done is I wrote a blog. It's um, a, a French statistician, friend, uh, Francis Anscom or Anscom Bay, maybe I mispronounce it. He created a data set um, of points where the averages are the same across all the four data sets. The, for the X and the Y score, the variance for X and Y are exactly the same across all of those four data sets and the correlations are all the same. But if we scroll down a little bit, we actually see that the data points behind those quartets as they're called, the uh, sets of data are completely different. So if we were only to show the aggregated results in a table, you would not get the exact same information as when you would visualize them. Uh, as you can see, they're very, very, very different. Uh, so this is another reason why you would visualize is because showing it in a table is one thing, but showing the data behind it as a visual is a very big, powerful story. Um, and as you can see, we actually use some pre-attentive attributes here. We use color to differentiate between the quartets uh, and we've used uh, actually spatial, uh, so uh, grouping the dots together where they're supposed to be together. Uh, and we've lined all of these quartets. So they are, uh, they, they have a line around them. So, you know, these are one quartet, that's another quartet. So actually we're using these pre-attentive attributes when we visualize as well. Yes, so I think this is a very good, uh, very nice example. And um, y you could imagine, you could even use the different forms, uh, um, for example. One thing to keep in mind is uh, don't overdo those things. Um, because you all, as a human being, you have this cognitive load and um, if, if there's like too much, uh, too much going on, if you do, and you do a lot of colors, like 12 colors, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, everything has a different color, like 100 colors, um, you do different shapes, you do a lot, then there is just too much. Then it's really hard to, to see what's important. And this is also something uh, that's called data uh, to ink ratio. It's not exactly the same, but I think it's a really important concept. Um, you could have a lot going on, as you can see in the left top corner. It's by the world's loudest stadiums. I see a lot of color, but the color is not used super effectively. It's just like, I cannot even call it nice, but it's, it's there. And because everything screams for my attention, my attention is nowhere. I'm just looking at little flags or at the people. Uh, for me, it's really hard to see where is this, where is this about? What is the most important thing? Where do you want me to look at? Because there is so much going on. Um, and my, I noticed, I, even now, when I've seen this thing like a lot of times, and I watched this video a lot of times, um, it's, not, it's not clear for me. So um, this is a video I would recommend. Uh, Dan is going to share the link, so you all have the link. And um, with, with some adjustments, you could go to the uh, you could go to the image in the right 
uh, bottom corner. This has exactly the same data, uh, the same information, but this is really clear. Uh, there's not too much going on. My mind is not exploding. It's very cl clear, very lean. So what I now immediately see is the, uh, the, red, the red bar. And that is, the, that is the world's loudest stadium. So my attention immediately goes to this part. And this is what I want. This is clear, my mind calms down, I'm happy and uh, I like it. And for me personally, this is um, a nice way to visualize this because um, the, the, the sidebar, the, the, the axis has been dropped. Uh, you just see the numbers that are there and you can focus very easily. And um, if you're interested in this way of visualizing and if you like this way, I would recommend, recommend this book. I really like this book. It's about uh, storytelling um, with data and it explains you step by step how you could um, give the most effective data. Oh, is there a question now? I thought I saw some... some... No, Fritz, Fritz was testing. Ah, okay, I saw something popping by. <laughs> um, I really like this book. I can maybe, yeah, click on the website. Um, I have not seen the Let's Practice book yet. I'm also very curious about this one, but I'm not talking about the storytelling with data from Cole Nussbaum, Rick Naflik, if I pronounce it right. Um, and she explains very well and very clear how to come from good images to really great, um, great visualization that really uh, improve your way of storytelling. And only if you read the first chapter, you have also a lot of tips and they will, they will really help you and they will help you to communicate your data even better and to, and to have the end user see what you uh, intended to do. Um, and if you look at the website, there are also, there's also a bit extra information. It's not sponsored. I just really like the book and it's about storytelling with data, which I really like. Um, and Fritz has a question. He asks if we know the book, I'm guessing in English, it would be principles by Stephen few, yes. um, which he says is a, also best practices for visualization. It rings a bell. I should, I, I'm really visual orientated, so it rings a bell, but if I would see the cover, I would really uh, uh, know it. So what was the name again? Uh, in Dutch, it's Principes. Principes van Stephen. So, I do know Stephen Few. Uh, he is great in dashboard design and visual best practice. I, I don't know this particular book, but I know that uh, basically anything by Stephen Few is a good read and will definitely help you further. So it's a good tip to have yes. principles or principles. Yes. Thank you, Fritz. Yes, thank you. And I think he also wrote the book Dashboard Design, am I correct? Correct, yes. And he has another, at least, which is a, a big and well-known one, which is Show Me the Numbers. Yes, um, so yeah, Stephen Pugh is one of the foundation founding members of having good dashboard design and what does it mean to create a dashboard and have that good design. So it's a good tip, Fritz. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, if you have more book tips, uh, yeah, please tell. I was also thinking about doing something about uh, a session about books because, uh, yes, books are cool. I really like books. Uh, was there another question, Dan? Uh, no, not for now. Um, well, I will share in the chat is a Tableau's white paper on visual analysis guidebook, as they call it. It's a very short, uh, good um, resource to have open when you're building dashboards. This is more Tableau's take on it, so it's not the cold hard truth, uh, but they give some very great uh, tips there. And if you're ever thinking of doing, for instance, a certified professional exam, these are the things that they're also uh, using as a guide to when they're looking at the exam. So, okay, thank you. And um, yes, and so there are principles, there are rules to follow, there are books to read. And one thing that's left, that's you always have your own taste. Some, uh, 
some things which I like could somebody else doesn't like, but if it communicates your message and you can explain why, then uh, it can also be uh, a good visualization, even though, for example, if Dan wouldn't like my colors or something else. So um, It's important to take into account it's always uh, best practice. That doesn't mean it's written in stone. And you'll notice uh, a lot of people when they talk about best practice will also tell you I've built this dashboard. I know it doesn't adhere to rule or best practice X, Y, or Z, um, but there are reasons for it. So if you have a good reason to not follow these best practice lines uh, or uh, rules because your story doesn't need it or there's something that you need to not adhere to, that's absolutely fine as long as it's a conscious decision and it's not uh, I didn't know. Or, uh, because uh, everyone said so, like, don't use pie chart. Exactly. Well, uh, you can say a lot about this, this subject, but always use your own mind and why do it and in which way. So, uh, yeah, what you said, it's, it's, it's important to keep thinking and keep explaining why. And, uh, yeah, maybe uh, be critical. And I think that's a really good thing to do. So are there any questions then? Um, not at the moment. Um, we can actually tell a little bit what's coming up. Uh, we have some more sessions in the future. If you do have any ideas of sessions or things within uh, best practices or dashboard design or anything else uh, and you think might be worthwhile, uh, just give us a hint in chat and we'll see what we can come up with. Yes, so, um, and this session is recorded, like also the prep talks, and indeed, if you have requests, just ask them, we can dive into them. Um, and then I really want to thank you for your time, and uh, have a great day.